Guys, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having us again. Thanks for having us on again. <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming on again. When was the last time you guys were on? Was it a year ago? No, no. longer than that. Yeah, nearly two. I think, I think it was... No, eight, it's not two. 18 yeah. months ago, weren't it? Yeah. Basically, well, we came on your podcast mm. and we were like, this is how we should be doing it. Mm. We should be filming it and we need better microphones <laughs> and we need a studio. So and literally, a nicer work environment. Um, yeah. <laughs> and a better culture yeah. and better everything. And we need candy kittens in the corner. <laughs> so basically, after we came on your podcast last, we moved studios and we moved our podcast recording and we basically yeah. copied you. But you guys are looking great now. Oh, thank well, you. Well, thank you. Is that fake great. brick? Yeah, we got fake brick <laughs> yeah, in the background. It's, everything's <laughs> real in here. Everything's real in here. Also, I see, because honestly, your guys, your clips are genius. And one of your clips... Oh, yeah. The shoebox. Holy smoke It yeah. went... Every, the amount of people that sent me this clip... Yeah. When it, can you explain, for people who don't know... Oh, thank you for asking me. Yeah, what happened in the clip? Um, Melissa, I think her name was, yes. or Melanie, uh, wrote in... She was house-sitting. She was house-sitting for her parents who were away on holiday, and for some odd reason, she decided to look under her parents' bed. That was the first alarm bell. And we were like, Why? And she found a shoebox. She Why? then decided to open the shoebox. Silly girl. And she found an array, array of toys mm. in all different shapes and sizes. And she, I mean, she wiped one down. Uh, this was a oh, dildo. Wiping it down. Had a lovely time with it. In fact, she told us it was the best time she'd ever had. She'd and used it all week. She'd used it quite a few oh. times. And then she looks on the, on the bottom, on the side, and it's got the brand name, which is Cloner Willy. So, obviously, she, the penny drops that this is a replica of her father's oh penis. <laughs> and I quote, it was giving her the best orgasms of her life. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we were, and she was very confused. And, I mean, what, would, what advice would you give? Yeah, yeah what her? advice would you give to that? Um, don't do it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and go and find a very good therapist. And don't look under your mum's shoebox or in the bedside Why? Drawer. Why don't look under the bed? You think that's the first thing? Do you look yes. under your parents' bed? Oh, I don't know. I once... Lo- oh, I should... Uh, no, go on. No. Oh, I, it's, oh, we've all done it. Okay, fine. I once looked in... My, my parents had like a TV, I can't believe, in, in their room. And it was my stepdad and my mum. And I looked in their cupboard and there was just porn videos. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of them. Wow. Loads. Of th- Can like, you remember any of the titles? Oh no, but it was Shaving like, Private Ryan, <laughs> Indiana one. Jones and the Temple of Poon, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's another one? When you What's were kids, another one? Uh, there was Titanic Two Down Under. <laughs> oh, Schindler's Fist. <laughs> no, that was. Yeah, <laughs> Sh- Schindler's Fist. <laughs> <laughs> really, really anything else? <laughs> Can you, I don't know if that is true, but it's just what you heard on the school playground. Right. Oh, so, yeah, I a think porno, you went to a very different school to us. There's a porno <laughs> called Schindler's Fist. Yeah. But, oh, we'll but, look but, it up. I, but on, on that, just to tangent very quickly, <laughs> mm. when I was younger, I, I, the first time I ever saw porn when I, was something called More Precious Than Gold. And it was one, at boarding school, it was one DVD that was just passed around. Yeah. To every single boy. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what... No, I'm not going to ask you any follow-up <laughs> questions. Was it the making of you? <laughs> I think... Well, I've told this story before. Should I tell you this story? Please yeah. tell I me. can't believe I'm sharing this much. Okay, this is no word of... Okay. This is no word of a lie. Yes. And it's, it's really embarrassing. I can't believe I'm telling you this. I'm sure I've told it before. We all were in our first year um, at my school. And so we were about 13 years old because this was this other school I went to. And the the guys had this porn DVD, which was called More Precious Than Gold. And it starred Jenna Jameson, who was, oh. who was a famous porn star, who, uh, for both guys who may not know this, that apparently she was so good at porn that she could blow uh, bubbles with semen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so anyway, <laughs> I, can't nice. believe, I can't believe we're getting into this. Nice I can't to have about, a hobby. We're only can't five minutes in. The story. It was only five minutes in. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, we... We all were watching. I, I had the DVD and we lay the computer up in the front like that. And the, all the boys were here and we we're ready to do it. There's about 10 of us. No, I'm sorry. This Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I honestly, I've, thir- I've never seen porn in my entire, I've never seen porn. Anyway, we, I get the DVD, I put it in and I close it shut and I press play and we're all excited. 
and it starts and they start getting into it and I'm sitting there and without touching myself in front of everyone high orgasm <laughs> And I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone. So I just went, oh, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Was it like film club? You all just sat there watching it? <laughs> yeah, we all sat there watching it, yeah. We had one that... You must have had something like that, Yeah, guys. my Come mate on. My mate brought one back from Tenerife. Oh, my it, God. It was Spanish. And all the way through it, and all our mates, we had an in joke. It was just, vamos, 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 vamos. <laughs> I saw a member of this girl doing, she's going, vamos, vamos, which I think means faster or... Uh, Is it the way you say it? Vamos. She's going, vamos, vamos, was it babos, babos, babos. Vamos. Vamos, 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 that was it. Vamos. Vamos. Sorry, vamos, vamos. Vamos is something you put in your hair. Uh, William, do you ever, you've never had an experience like that? No, funnily enough, no. Um, but you did go to boarding school I did well. go to boarding school. We got up to other things uh, of an evening, um, like shoe polishing. Uh, I was, the boys would always bring their <laughs> shoes in because I had a shoe cleaning kit yeah. and uh, I used to buff them up nicely. I bet you did. So you used to do that for all the other boys' shoes? For those that asked, mm. yeah, um, that I liked, generally. With your your podcast, guys, because mm. also what normally, I think with podcasting, you normally get a certain amount of people listening to it and then it sort of stays like that. But you guys seem to get new listeners all the time. Mm. We're very lucky. You're really, you have an amazing amount. Who, um, have you ever had someone write in that you actually couldn't read out because it was too bad? Or do you kind of read most things out? We read most things out. We recently all agreed to stop doing poo-based dilemmas. We were getting too much poo, uh, especially after the igloo incident. Oh, yeah. So explain this one. This is... uh, I'll go again. Um, I so can't. this was. Well, how many minutes are we in now? We're about ten. <laughs> seven. About seven. Okay. Similar, similar sort of vibe to Melissa. And by the way, we're not a Zex podcast. Um, <laughs> I insist on that. Although we do seem to do quite a lot of these dilemmas. And as someone pointed out to me, sex is in the title of our podcast. Um, so I can't be too prissy. But the someone had gone round to someone's house, mm. dinner party. Oh, we need some more ice. Went you know, in the goes freezer. To the, the ice straw, and there were. Um, uh, poos, frozen turds. frozen turds, and apparently it, stuffed inside a condom, and they are used for sexual pleasure, and that is called iglooing. Apparently, I don't really. I know mean, why. I I think that's probably the worst we've had. I think that makes Melissa's look like Beatrix Potter. I mean, e- why on earth would someone want to? Well, you've got to be careful here because we said this and we got accused of kink shaming. Yes, so we had a bit of backlash. So, from I the mean, iglooing why? community. <laughs> I, I got I got told off for kink shaming as well because um, apparently there I can't, we're getting into this again but apparently there is a fetish where you love the smell of just what well, I can only describe as arsehole you just love the, you love the smell of it and we got sent in one where someone um, just basically kept sending this girl that she had met on night out saying I can't wait to and then would send an emoji of his nose and like the peach she was like what does I don't understand what that means. Anyway, when they ended up having sex, it was literally that, that he just wanted to smell. Her bum. Her bum. Right. And we laughed about it, and yes. we were then told off for kicking kick shit. So you've got to be careful. Each to their own. Each yeah. to, as long as it's all above board. It's, it's not lime basil mandarin, is it? I mean, it's not... <laughs> you want something a bit nicer. I, I just think I'm really vanilla. I think I'm really vanilla. Like, lights off. <laughs> duvet <laughs> on. <laughs> Let's not talk. Do pay on. But yeah, not do. Do, you t- do they off? No, it's a bit. It's a bit too free. I don't know. No, but the do they can get in the way. <laughs> also, think it's of Monday. the bedding. <laughs> yes, this is how a week's going to be. It's only Monday at time of recording. Um, but you guys have written a book. Yes. We have. Okay. It's called. Funnily enough, help. I. My boss. boss. It's got an asterisk in. Our Um, podcast doesn't have an asterisk. Yeah. But the book has got an asterisk. But but it's amazing. And Liv, our producer, has been reading through lots of it. And you basically go through the whole book giving help on different things. Yeah. Whether it's dating... Uh, moving house, all this different stuff. Nights out. So when our when our podcast started in yeah. series one and two, we were themed episodes. So okay. it was the first episode was on dating and and etc. Office etiquette. Office etiquette. We, we're now sort of an all all you know each episode is we have an array of topics as you have. Is that what it started off as? Yeah. yeah. We did it as... And then you were starting to run out and you were like, okay, <laughs> let's spread it out a little bit. We honestly both thought we'd get a couple of series out of it. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, we actually pitched it to the BBC, didn't we? You say you like to tell people. And they did were like, really? and, they, and it didn't get past the first round of commissioning. So we're like, our friend Stuart, who owns the production company, were like, you should do this anyway. And we're like, yeah. And, uh, we and we're very glad life turned out the way it did. And we did like two or three series. And then we just kept doing more. And then, was it last year now or two years coming up that we just decided to go every week? We went weekly. Last January now. Was it a year ago? No, yeah, series two, and finishing. But you do a bonus that. episode now as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so two episodes a week. I well, th- episode and a half. I think the bonuses are just as good as the They're so good. Now. Honestly, I, I love your podcast. And also what I love about the bonuses more so, the, the, the way the podcast is, is so relaxed. Mm. As in you oh, hear so yourself. You. You, it is. you. Honestly, you, it feels like there is no editing. It just keeps everything. <laughs> Everything stays in. Pretty much. In a great way, though. It, yeah. just, it feels so, the moving of the papers, whatever it is, whether you're Jordan out. dropping his pen on the table. Yeah, exactly, yes. the whole time. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I've realised that this is becoming a bit of an issue. Well, our editor, Jump Cut Jack, will be delighted that you have said it sounds like there's no editing. But mm. I like the rawness of it. I think sometimes mm. when it comes to podcasting, or I think, I think radio, I, I want to know your sort of view on this. Especially with BBC, what I, what I having done radio now is that mm. you be, you become w- w- concerned about what you can say, what you can't mm. say, because there are structures mm. in place in order to do that. So you almost become a presenter. Yeah. Mm. But then when it comes to podcasting, you don't want to be a you want to be far more natural. They're two they're two completely different uh, yeah. dis- disciplines. Definitely. So and give it to us. I, I, I get asked this all the time. Like being on the radio is a completely different discipline and you've got time, you know, you, you might, your producer might say you've only got two minutes on this link because we've got to get a song on on the news. Um, and obviously there's certain things you, you can and can't say on the radio because you've got kids listening at all the time. There's no, there's no watershed on the radio. It's, it's always, so at nine o'clock on TV, you can swear and stuff. That's not the case on radio. There's no watershed. Um, and whereas podcast is just, it's, no discipline it, you can talk you can just verbal diarrhea and just talk about stuff and there's stuff that like i i always write stuff down in my notes and i'm like right this isn't going to work for the radio mm. but it'll work for the podcast and I don't, it's like mm. there'll be something like i don't know the next door neighbor's cat's now pretty much our cat and yes I've kevin kevin and i've now although uh, you know so he did the story he's basically adopted this cat, cat which was great for the podcast but when i pitched it to the radio they were yeah, like, but you've called it kevin and it's a tabby cat and everyone's or tabby or tortoiseshell and everyone's written in and goes that's actually a female cat so oh. actually kevin needs <laughs> kevin to kevin yeah you need to so. why have you adopted this cat because we j- i just give it a bit of milk put it in a little and also cats don't drink milk it's really bad yeah they actually. don't drink milk no. oh I, I don't know if you meant to but I, you're I've killing got, kevin i've got an, i've got <laughs> I've got an I've got an ashtray outside, right? So I put a bit of milk in it, and then the cats now. So every morning, or when I get in from work, I put a little right. bit of milk in the ashtray, and the cat licks it up. You're, you're potentially. So if you've got a cat, you, you haven't you have a you have an ashtray that you put yeah. outside. You feed the stray cat. If you've got a cat that's coming in with fag breath, it's probably me that's <laughs> feeding it. Who does the cat belong to? I think it's next door or next door, but one. But yeah, um, it is, and you've been and you've been covering on Radio One lately. Sounding yeah. great as well. You have. I don't know if I not, sound great. No, it's not easy know. to do. It is because well, you do radio as well. Not presenting. Yeah, I do you, contributing. But but it is. It's this weird thing. Podcasting is fine. Radio for some reason, when that light goes red mm. and you know that you're live, something happens where you suddenly become. I, I don't. know, You feel less confident, less comfortable. Mm. Yeah. Well, you should, yeah. And I don't know why that happens. And you said there, like, you feel like you can't say certain things just because a producer says you can't say it. If you think it's going to be funny, push back a bit. Say it. It'll be funny. We won't get in trouble. Because don't, especially, uh, like, certain companies and whatever, you've got to be careful which you go, but just, you can, you can push it slightly. What do you prefer? Podcasting or radio? Mm, radio's my first love. Because, you you... Sorry. No, no, no. I I love. Anyone, yeah, but you do. For anyone listening, if, if you want to have a star student, Jordan North is your, you love radio. He has studied the discipline. Yeah, you just, you love it. Oh, I do. I, I live and breathe it. And I'm always listening around. I've always got the radio on. I always listen to other shows. You know, I listen to rival stations because I'm a geek and I love it. And I always say, if you've had a good radio show, if you've had a really good show, mm. there's no better buzz when you go home. You're like, yeah, but if you've had a crap one then you can i can be a bit miserable. but i'm like that with so in my so jordan's job obviously a day job is talking to millions of people yeah with a microphone but you can't see them whereas in my day job i talked whether it's three people or 300 people teaching people so i like seeing my 
audience and actually having them there and, and feeding off them. So when we do our uh, live tour thing for, for the podcast, yeah. if we have a good show, that's my adrenaline. Yeah, and not Jordan as much. No, he's much better than he was now. And I say this all the time, but he the first show we did <laughs> in a basement pub in Camden with like 35 people, he was climbing the walls. Terrible stage, right? <laughs> what are you I get te- I, I, even now. We say I'm better, I get terrible stage fright. I can't, it's just, when we go on tour and stuff, I am so nervous. Smoking like a chimney, downing vodka. It's probably not good, actually. But that's such a condo, because you're speaking to way more people mm. live on the yes. radio. But you, So what is that? Because you can't see them. I can't see them. And when you're on tour and you can see the whites of their eyes, it's the same as well for TV. I started doing Saturday Night Takeaway, mm. and you're live to millions of people there, and that is nerve-wracking. But put me in front of a microphone on the radio and I'm fine. It's so weird. It's, uh, yeah. Mm. If you ever did Strictly Come Dancing, you'd Oof. shit yourself. I, mm. I, yeah. I don't, I can't <laughs> dance anyway. So I, you well, that didn't stop Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> so you could be the Anne Widdicombe yeah. of, of your year. But the radio's better as well because um, it's, it's, so in, it's so instant. You could say something on the radio, you can have a whole show planned and then a text will come in that will take the show another way. And, mm. you know, if you want to be, I always use this example, if you want to be in France on the radio, you just play the low, low theme tune, <laughs> even though it's like 40 years old. What do you think instant. makes a good presenter? Um, for anyone up and coming now, but when it was, because oh, I, because you, you, you have insight, you, you, for sure, because you guys have presented, hosted, and what you do in everyday life is you're constantly hosting, constantly presenting. So yeah. what, what does... Because it, it uh, there are so many people who message me or speak to me who always say, I want to get into presenting, I want to get into this mm. and that. It's it's hard. Mm. Yeah, it is. It is. I'd say you've got to be fun and entertaining. You've also got to sound really slick as well on the radio. If you sound a bit clunky and, you, you know, you can't do the basics like fire a song off or back and the tracks, you've got to sound like you know what you're doing. Mm. It says me, you make mistakes all the time. But I think another but that's thing, part of your brand. Yeah, you've got to be a bit, you've got to be a bit relatable as well. You've got to be relatable and uh, just like people listen. Do you think authenticity is... Yeah. I, a lot of, I bet you wish you never asked me now, but a lot of people as well, radio is massive, especially in this country. More people listen to the radio than daytime TV. So, right, take for example... Uh, this morning, it's yeah. always in the papers. Uh-huh. This morning, on a good day, on a good day, it gets a million viewers. Yeah, yeah. Kiss Breakfast gets double that. You know, Re- Greg James. I never miss it. Greg James. Do you listen to every you, Kiss Breakfast? Greg it. James Radio on Breakfast gets four million listeners every morning. Get out of here! Yeah. It's that much? Yeah, mm. pe- pe- something like eighty-eight percent of the country listen to radio at one point during the week. Radio's still massive in this country. It's still Vernon K has got the biggest radio show in Europe. The um, whole of Europe. He's got, what is it, seven, six, seven million listeners? Don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but why radio, do you think a, there's an appetite for it still? Because, because okay, if we, if we go into it, television is, we, linear television is having a tricky time. Mm. People aren't watching live TV unless it's sport or whatever it is. We have Spotify, we have podcasting. We, I can go on to Apple, Spotify, whatever, and click on your podcast mm-hmm. and just listen to it whenever. Why would I do that over not having, well, clicking on radio and listening to that? Well, I, I think radio and podcasts are different. They're not, not, they're not the same. And I don't think podcasting is the death of radio or, any, or anything like that, or even Spotify is the, and sort of music services are the death of radio. But I think with radio, it's slightly more, depending on, it depends on the show, but it's slightly more wallpaper. Mm-hmm. Whereas podcasts, as we know, as we all know, people generally listen to podcasts on with their earphones. Yeah. So you are literally the voices inside of their head. Although obviously people do listen to radio with headphones, fewer people listen to radio with headphones. And so it's a different relationship, I think, that you might have with a radio presenter in the car, on the DAB radio, in the bathroom, or whatever it is, to the person on your commute that you're listening to who's inside your head. So I think, although radio is more intimate than television, I think podcast is, podcasting is more intimate than radio because because of how people listen not because when, of what they're saying but because of how they when you like ever first started radio and you want to learn the first thing they say to you is you only ever speak to one person so you don't mm. say how are you all it's like what do you think why don't you get in touch so you always it, you, you talk as if you'd speak into one person even though you've got millions listening because yeah. it makes a way better yeah. connection yeah it's interesting, right? Because also, I think we spoke about this in the last time but I just want to remind people who maybe are just tuning in now maybe don't know you guys are 
a sort of unmatched. Fr- if you if you were to find get two people to match together and say you guys are going to be friends, mm. you guys unlikely friendship. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And it, where did you guys first meet? It was at a party, wasn't it? We we met the first time we met was um, I was a runner at Radio Five Live. I was on work experience for the BBC. And I Willie, didn't know this one. Yeah, William was a guest on it. And I was 21 at the time. I was still in uni. And I thought William was like in his <laughs> mid 40s. And <laughs> every time you tell that story, it gets older. And <laughs> I thought he was, we were the same age. And I thought he was in his mid 40s. And he would like go home and have a sherry. And he's got a little librarian wife. He's a very bad judge of character. <laughs> and then I, I do, however, I did like a sherry. Yeah. So that, that was, bit was right. That was yes. the one thing. Okay. Yeah, and then we, we 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 met, and I showed him to the studio, and we had a chat, and thought we'd never meet again. And then it turns out I moved in to a flat in Manchester, who with some mutual friends who he went to uni with. Yeah. And, and so I went to go and visit the friends at this party, and mm, he was there. It was an Olympics uh, Olympic host. What was it? The, the it was the closing. Ceremony. No, it was the opening ceremony. No, it wasn't because I watched that with my friend Matt. <laughs> it was the opening ceremony. No, it wasn't. I, I am no, telling you now, it was the opening ceremony. Well, it wasn't because I remember sitting there going, "That won't be the real queen." And I can remember <laughs> that was not the opening about Matt, ce- The story about the <laughs> that was the opening ceremony where she jumped out the plane. Yes, but I watched that with Matt. You watched that with me. Um, I am s- sorry, Jamie. I am certain it, it was the opening ceremony. Okay. Because there was that American girl there, and you just. Because he basically took... Casey? Yeah, yeah. It was the only... Well, I'll ask Casey. Anyway, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so we... And my friend, yeah. my housemate said to me, I've got a mate coming round, he's a bit posh. You won't like him. Just don't be rude. And apparently he said the same you to won't William. like him. He said, my housemate's a bit rough around the edges. You won't like him. Don't be rude. And, and we just got us now. And we just got on. Yeah. So, so it was a friendship story from the beginning? Yeah. 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 And yeah. he was just he was just very... He was very different, very funny, and I, I like a good laugh, and Jordan provides a good laugh. Yeah. So. Tell him about the first meal we went to. One, well, yeah, one of the first meals we did on our own uh, were in Manchester, a restaurant called Gusto on mm-hmm. Deansgate. Gusto. I used to live in uh, Manchester, and you were obviously up there. And Jordan ordered for first course mussels, which is a bit adventurous, but whatever. He ordered mussels, and obviously they come and start preparing your table once you've put your order in. And they brought over the finger bowl for the mussels with a slice of lemon in it and put it in front of Jordan. And Jordan sort of panicked and turned to the waiter and went, no, I didn't order the soup. (laughs) And God bless him, he thought it was soup. Um, It's to dip your fingers in, Jamie. Yes, Jamie knows that. that. I know that. He thought it was soup. Yeah. So we were chatting. Very unappetising looking soup. He thought it was soup. I don't know. It was soup. I, do you know, this is no whatever, again, I did this in Hong Kong. Um, I was asked to go to Hong Kong to do some, in, to basically be the face of the TRL, which is, I think it's TRL, which is the train company out there. Yeah. Anyway, I flew out there. I, I don't know how on earth they thought I was a good choice, whatever it was. You've I mean, never they, been on a train in your life. I'd never <laughs> been on a train. You know, there's trains underground. <laughs> 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 anyway, I flew out there and... Um, I arrive and I was asked if I want to go for lunch with the, their team. I went for lunch and none of them spoke English. They, you know, they were, uh, everyone was speaking Chinese and I was just sitting there. I didn't know what to do. And there was a, I was freaking out and, and this food was coming out. And it was very traditional and there was a bowl in front of me. And I was so dehydrated from the flight. I drank from the bowl <gasps> and I looked to my left and the guy was using it as his <laughs> Well, it happens. I honestly had no idea, so I completely understand. And William teaches out there a lot. Yeah, a lot. Do of, well, you? Uh, well, I used to be very big in the Asia Pacific region, but uh, then there was this thing called COVID, so I haven't really gone back since but then. People but forget he actually to. teaches etiquette around know, the world. This is okay. we got I it. was very big, twenty eleven to twenty nineteen. Huge. October twenty nineteen. So g- give last. me like, give me like a monthly, a weekly, like, like because pe- that's confusing for people, I imagine, right? Because they're just like, well, what do you mean you teach etiquette? So uh, we'll do all sorts of courses, whether it's dining etiquette like that, social, business protocol, diplomatic protocol, um, dress codes, entertaining. And you were flown all over the world? Yes, more so China, Hong Kong, um, Middle East, India, uh, Namibia I did in Africa. Um, That was quite fun. It's amazing. The the foreign ministry. The Caribbean. I've taught in the Caribbean. But do you have it now? Because so if you, I did drama, right? I thought all of us must have done drama at one point, yes. right? And you know, what, when, what sort of plays did you do? Oh my God, Jenny's End, Rally. Okay. We did Oklahoma. Yeah. 
Jordan's, Jordan's line was, I'm so hungry, Annie, I could eat a gate. <laughs> oh, so if you remember that. I know. Yes, because you talk about it. Wait, dude, yeah. what was your line, Jordan? Gee, Annie, I'm so hungry, I could eat a gate post. <laughs> That was my line in year eight. That was your, that was your only line. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but I do. So now, because of drama, mm. uh, you you look at things. You're like, oh, that the door is painted red because it means this. You know, you, you kind of oh, hate that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we like. <laughs> No, I can remember GCSE English with the Great Gatsby. It's like, uh, Mr. Morris, hello, if you're listening, was, was saying, oh, let's talk about why why F. F. Scott Fitzgerald has, has chosen to make Gatsby's car interior green. I don't know, maybe just because he thought it looked nice. Don't, let's not did read into do, green. He just wanted a green the car great interior. Gatsby for GCSE? Yeah. We did holes. I'm sorry. <laughs> you did holes? Yeah. For I GCSE? Was, yeah. Well, so did I, but unofficially. Uh, yeah, I was in third set, so. Ah. Oh. But I'm sad, I think. Yeah. But I, I have this thing. So with drama, right, you, you, you analyze it. Well, does that mean when you go to restaurants, you go to dinner parties, mm. you go to meetings, and you're not in your sort of professional thing, do you then start judging? Well, you do notice. Un- I'll, un- I'll be honest. I'm not going to. I've decided I'm going to not give the, P, the PC answer that I normally give. Great. Yes, I notice. <laughs> However, do I say anything? No. It's hard when friends, to be fair, friends don't so much do it now. They go, oh, we set the table nicely because you're coming. Have we got it correct? And you look at it and you think, no. But you're not going to say that because that's obviously going to upset them because they've spent so, spent so much time titivating their table and there are still a thousand things wrong but they've put in effort and that's lovely it's so nerve-wracking when he's coming I'm, to your house I'm, I'm i don't know how to sit right now oh it's i'm freaking out <laughs> look at don't no, you it's no, don't now. judge me don't look at my shoes what's going on no got a nice flash of ankle it's nearly november but it's fine <laughs> i never wear socks what i never have wear you got socks. invisible socks no out? nothing i never wear socks oh do, do your feet, feet not, not stink? smell never stink no i never wear socks all right. Pass us your shoe. Let's have a sniff. No, d- uh, honestly, no, I, I, I'm I, not sniffing it. I, I never. Oh my god, you're I not joking. I'm not Jamie's joking. now passing. It's a Nike trainer. Oh, he's right. Go on, will you smell it? Just smell it. Just smells like a normal trainer. <laughs> <laughs> I because if I don't wear socks, my trainers stink. So, I've got some of those super gays. What they called? S- super super grass. Super grass. What did you say? Super what? Super gays. <laughs> super gay. <laughs> Um, I've got some of those and I wear them on I don't even know socks in and they bloody stink tea bags apparently put, you put tea bags in there put so tea bags have you there. always had not smelly feet never I don't I don't have smelly feet I don't really sweat I bet yeah yeah and it's just uh, you and Prince Andrew just me and <laughs> Prince Andrew so similar and <laughs> 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 and I can I used to be not so much but I used to be able to sleep anywhere so, so if you if I needed to fall asleep I could just fall asleep could fall asleep on a washing line yeah I could yeah. just fall I, I, I didn't mind I could just fall asleep not because I was tired I just could I could sleep okay. anywhere okay yeah well that's nice what is your biggest pet peeve then oh great question uh, <laughs> what do you really when you see it it really grinds you I don't like people playing music out loud on public transport oh, or anywhere yes. just put your headphones in I think that's so obnoxious yeah. that's my biggest pet peeve yes I want to start a charity that we I say a charity there's absolutely no charitable foundation in this whatsoever but you just I need to carry with me little disposable earphones that you can sort of passive aggressively just put on someone's mm. lap on the tube on those trains that go underground just to sort of give them uh, headphones because why that if we were all listening to music or it's actually doing so calls, annoying. it's actually so annoying so what a cacophony annoying. it would be and why is one person sort of a gender listening and it's also terrible music it's not like they're listening well, it's to not just that it's now like I was on a flight recently and the kid had the iPad on and they watched the cartoon with no headphones in driving no. me on the mad. whole flight yeah whole flight yeah, yeah. See, and he was like come just give him get some bloody headphones in but but when you must so when you go for dinner parties or if yes. you throw it in, it might, it's it's nerve wracking right because you know you're going to be judged. Yeah, so I just go the other way now. So <laughs> I I have talked about this. I just throw all the cutlery in the middle of the table and it's kind of like help it's yourself. Basically going to weather spoons. I'm just like Jordan. help no, yourself. You don't do yeah, that. You do, you do, yeah. do that. And he he, he in, secretly in likes it. I had hit William and Ben round recently. We had a curry night and we I've, I've, I've made chili for him and I just put it in a pot in the middle. It's like help yourself. I mean, why bother having mm. friends around, really? Okay, because uh, in your book, right, as yes. you said, you go through different things. And the one that uh, I like is help. Where should we go on a first date? Mm. Yes. Okay, huge, right? Yeah. We live in a world lack of connection now. People are just on apps. They don't really want to, they just like chatting. They don't really like meeting up. Meeting up is intense. It's scary in different ways. Mm. Advice. If someone wants to go on a date. Yeah. They haven't been on a date in a while. Yes. 
Where do you go? Keep it short. Coffee. Coffee. Oh, what? It's the lamest thing in the... No, because you can always then go... No, you can... Or tea. You can always go somewhere else if it's going really well. I can remember... I'm married now, but I can remember having a date with a guy and he was... We were very chatty on tech. Like, great on tech. Yeah. Like, we... To the point where it's like, oh my God, I think we've got a real vibe. This is great. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And due to his work schedule and my work schedule, we we didn't meet up for a couple of weeks. But still, for three weeks, we were... Like incessantly chatting, and I was really hopeful. Mm-hmm. And we went for dinner, and he could hardly hold the conversation. Mm. And it was the slowest meal of my life. What? Because he was nervous. He uh, just he was just he very. I think it's a generational thing. Very good, sort of remotely texting, but yeah. in real life, IRL, he was not particularly good. Where would you go for a first date? Well, I would do an activity. I think coffee. Mm. I think coffee. An activity. Is, what, like zip wire? <laughs> I wouldn't go to. But I, paintball I, in. <laughs> yeah, go not for yeah paintball. Laser quest just in the dark. Oh yeah, <laughs> not from that age. I think I would do like a maybe like a crazy golf or something like oh that. Oh, that's quite cute. Coffee. Crazy golf. I feel like coffee is not a date. Oh, okay. I don't think it's a maybe date. a drink. Actually, a drink. You go for a drink. Go for a beer. Yeah, I think so. And I heard I heard this thing the other day, which is apparently if you if you go on a date, mm. sitting opposite each other is actually far too intense. Yes, you shouldn't do that. You should side by side, side by side, or an L, or on, on a cro- like on a square of a table. Yeah, apparently that's much better. You get much deeper conversation by not actually engaging one on one with each other. And always, and I think I possibly put this in the book. I can't remember, but always accept, always say yes to a drink, even if it is just something. Mm. Again, I can remember on this makes me sound like a prolific date. I've been on about three different dates in my life, and two of them were in the same night. I had a it was back to back. I'm such a player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and well, you I, thought I'm going to go wild tonight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and to be fair, the first date he turned out to be straight. Uh, I was set up on it. Anyway, that's a whole other story. But wait, this, wait, I, what? What? My wait, friends, what? Uh, Hattie, Leanne, and Chelsea, who also ran the student radio station with me in Manchester yeah. this guy came into the uh, studio and was like oh I'm thinking of doing a speech based radio show and they said oh you need to talk to William he's head of speech mm-hmm. um, you were head my, of speech head of, head of oral and uh, <laughs> that was my job <laughs> and so was that actually oral t- programming <laughs> and head so, of oral <laughs> so they said here's his number we checked so let's go let's go for a drink and chat about you know speech based mm. radio and oh my god thrilling yeah exactly <laughs> and they text me with, oh my god he's so your type he had a little satchel he's really cute um obviously gay blah 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 he's not literally he gets there a he's not my type before he even walks in i feel like i'm not attracted to you and secondly uh he's got a girlfriend that he's told me about within about 30 seconds i don't think so he actually just wanted to, so to sit there <laughs> talking about Stephen <laughs> nolan's radio show for an hour oh he is good nolan he's yeah, one but of my... is, so he actually just generally wanted to have a chat yes. about and we went to oral. an olive bar in manchester an olive bar yes i can still see it now just off canal street i mean like the signs for that anyway so yes finished with that one yeah. went to this other date mm. i'd already had a drink so i didn't need another one thank you very much i was fine so he went do you want to drink i said no and I just sat there with nothing, and it was super awkward. That is but so intense. I know. Always say yes that to the drink. So but he never used to drink. When, this is another thing. When we first met, you were totally teetotal, pretty much, weren't right? yes. you? Yeah. He did, and now he's he a, drove me to drink. It gets hammered. But but now you guys have your drink, which is a uh, gin and bonnet. I thought it was a vin tint. What a, a gin and bonnet? The a Queen v- Mother, it's called. Oh, the Queen Mother. But what's in it again? Gin. It's gin, gin, and, and de bonnet. bonnet, and that is. A gin and a bonnet. <laughs> de bonnet. De bonnet is a French aperitif. It's a bit like port. Similar yeah. to I port. know the one you mean. I've forgotten the visit. Yeah, what yeah. am I thinking of? I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, that's dating. I've just got engaged. Oh, I just got married, sorry. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, rules on engagement. Mm. How do you ask someone to marry you? Yes. How do you do it? Where should you do it? How much of Jordan did he write? Did Jordan write a lot of this book as well? Did Jordan write a lot of this book? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I did. So how much? much? How much? Uh, 50, if, it's 50. A, if it's a pie chart, how much of the I, pie chart? I definitely say William's going slightly. Out. There's more of you in it because this is your bread and butter. I reckon. I, just, I reckon. I reckon none of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I did. We wrote. Loads of people have said this to me as well. We we wrote. We wrote quite a lot. Together. My but favorite. One chapter, my on. favorite moment during our writing session. We are doing a writing session on Zoom. Yeah. And uh, Jordan announced, uh, 
at the start, is it okay if I just do my ironing whilst we write this bit? I was like, this is you. So I just thought... No, I'll, do you know what? No, it's not was, okay. He was typing and I was recording and I was just like, right, I'll say what I think. Yeah, because whilst I'm then, I'll be hearing... Ch -ch 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 -ch, <laughs> as you're doing the ironing. I, I wrote quite a lot, but he, he, there's bits where in certain chapters, right, it's mainly him and I'll just try and to be fair, with something funny. When we did the audiobook a few weeks yeah. ago, I noticed this. Like There was, there was one chapter where, I mean, my, my uvula was red raw at the end because I was speaking and speaking and speaking and I thought, God, there's you know, Jordan's hardly saying anything. He's doing the odd lol or whatever the sort of aside is. But then there are other chapters like Nights Out. I hardly did much yeah. chatting and he did a lot so of it. So I talked about how to get into a drunk club. Uh, how, to get into, <laughs> how to get into a, how to get into a drunk club. <laughs> how to get into a club drunk. How to, you know, uh, charm the bouncers, the security staff, that kind of thing. So, there's, yeah. There's, yeah. so I've, uh, it evens I itself. Right, it, yeah. But the, it was really funny because the feedback, like yours were, what was the feedback we gave? Oh, well, yeah, when we then sort of it go, goes to the editor and then we were feeding back, I was uh, getting really irate that they had pushed back on, it's corrected for the book, uh, the styling of the now Princess of Wales, Catherine, yeah. comma, the Princess of Wales. When you are the current one, you are the, with a definite <laughs> article. Yeah. Whereas we'd also mentioned Diana, who is now Diana, comma, Princess of Wales, because she is not uh -huh. the Princess of Wales. Uh -huh. And they had got rid of the, the... So I'm getting really nuanced on that. Over here, on his <laughs> his side of the page, it's is Blozer with an A or an ER. <laughs> <laughs> Blozer is such a good Blosser. word. I was like, I'll just spell Blozer. Can you get the editor to check if it's A-R or O-R? So I think Penguin Random House had a very different experience with uh, with us. Mm. Two different styles of authors, like two different styles on the podcast. I can't believe we've wrote a book, though. It's amazing yeah. that you've written a book. It's, it's yeah. so good. Okay, so um, as I said, rules on engagement. Mm. Yeah. How big do you go? So when it, how did you propose or were you proposed yeah. to, can I ask? We came to a mutual decision. Okay, so there's listen. nothing more romantic than a mutual decision. Uh, we were, we had sort of, we had pre-COVID, we had talked about, you know, do we want to get married? I can remember watching actually the first ever episode of Queer Eye when that came back, yeah. and there was, a sort of, and we got all emotion. We paused it, and it was that there was a whole thing on the program about wearing rings or something. And I said to Mike, "Oh, would you ever wear a wedding ring?" Anyway, an hour later, we had our guest list done. That was sort of how it started. And then COVID happened, and obviously we wanted to strangle each other, and marriage was the last thing on the yeah, 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 on yeah, the yeah. agenda. COVID stopped, romance blossomed again, and um, I was we sort of sort of talked about it. And I think with for anyone, you have to have like a pre-engagement. You sort of sort of need to pre-agree that you're headed in that direction. Is my suggestion. I didn't do that. Did you? Oh, not? did you? Know well, it's obviously gone no. out. It's gone brilliantly for you. It's gone great, but I I boom straight in there. I, okay. I didn't. I, there was no warning. Okay. Well, there was warning because. Uh, How long had you been together? Two and a half years. Okay. And Sophie had, Sophie had seen rings. This is oh, what she told okay. me later. She had seen rings, and then I was in a shop window. Or? No, in I had I had ordered. Um, How many rings did you have? I had I had I had ordered loads of different types of rings so I could I could look at the styles of them, and then I would then I was going to get them made so I could see what they would look like. Oh. And then and then I was going to propose to her. My friend was getting married in Barbados, mm -hmm. and I was, you know, Barbados. Uh, <laughs> I've heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jordan that's... prefers Skegness. <laughs> okay, good. Um, it's much more him. I, uh, I was going to propose to her. Yeah. In Barbados before my friend's wedding. Oh. And one of my friends said that's the worst idea. Yeah, I don't. You agree. couldn't possibly yes. ever don't. do. Don't do that. Yeah, I, we said as well. I think we said this in the book. Don't do it in public or at a restaurant because they might say no. In front they're of never people. gonna say you know what they're gonna and say no. My I always use this as an example. My best mate got engaged to his now wife in New York and she didn't see it was coming until at the time skinny jeans were in. And it, all she could see was the ring, the box in his pocket the whole time they were walking around New York. And she was like, Oh god, he's gonna propose to me. So you could see the bulging ring in his pocket. So when you think prepare, you think have I a think discussion a of you know, a little bit of Where's communication. The romance yeah, where in that? is the romance in that? For same sex couples, it's maybe slightly trickier because who proposes to who? Yeah. Which is, again, I think why um, Mikey and I sort of just chatted. And I can remember we were, we were away on a staycation, again, slightly COVID y. And, uh, Farmhouse. And <laughs> we. For our fellow uh, media types that work in London, it was in Farmhouse. You know it. And you know it. Someone in. 
your listeners now in Newcastle are like, what's, what's farmhouse like? What's that? In Newcastle? Google Soho farmhouse. <laughs> anyway, the first Yeah, you lot are all laughing. <laughs> yeah, you know it. How's that holiday just getting this? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so first night, I thought I'll do it then. Yeah. We had a bit of an argument and I was sitting in Pen Yem. I'll just rip the plaster off. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> Anyone outside of London now is like, know. what are you going on about? I know. That was a very funny line, though. I'll just rip the plaster off. And quite, was you in a piglet? Uh, no, actually. Uh, yes, we were. That okay. Time. And uh, anyway, we'd had an argument, and I think both of us probably wanted to stab each other with the chopsticks, so I didn't do it that night. Second night, uh, we're up in Fancy Farm, and uh, in the top bit, and I sat down. It was July. Bizarrely, there was a roaring fire going, and I just said to Mikey, after we'd placed the order, I said, where do we stand on marriage? And I could see the colour drain from his face. And I thought, oh, my God, I've completely, I've misjudged this. And it was because he was planning the week after to drive to my parents oh. and say, FYI, we don't do the permission thing, because we don't sort of agree with that, but sort of, just so you know, I'm going to propose to William in the next couple of weeks. And I had beaten him to it by week. That is so lovely. So we then yeah. just sort of said, OK, well, let's be all right, yeah. Fine. Where did you propose then? I did in a hotel, I did in the Rosewood Hotel. Where's that? Nice. Yeah. In Hoban. <laughs> yeah, no, What's yeah. the Rosewood? It's up the road from where we record. Yeah, and I... and I for a drink. But mine was, I've, I've said this before, mine was no warning whatsoever. Why are we in a hotel in London when you live in London? Well, because it was nice and I, and I wanted to throw off the scent. And our first date was in the Rosewood, oh. so I thought, okay, Aww. we can do this back. I got balloons, put it in the room. I wore a suit. I, 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 I wore a suit, I, and I lit all these tiny little tea lights and put them on the ground. They burnt the ground. I'm they sure like, the hotel were delighted. They were delighted about that. A um, so did you propose in the room? I proposed in the room, and it was the most nervous I've ever been. They just say you feel like you're floating. I think that's because you're so full of anxiety. Like I was so anxious about the yeah. whole and the asphyxiation from the tea lights and, and everything that just everything that was going on. And also, it's the biggest gamble ever. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I've never yeah. thought of that. True. Huh? Yes, if especially it, if you haven't had a chat. If you haven't had a chat, it's the biggest gamble ever. You're you're going okay, fine. We're going to now stay together forever. And we are, and I love my wife more than anything in this world, but she, I don't know what she's thinking. Aww. I have Aww. no idea. So that was quite intense, I think. Yeah. You didn't feel that though. You were just, because you guys obviously. Yeah, we, we were okay. Well, I think when you know, you know. Did you, you, you must have known she was going to say yes though. No? I think she was. Yeah, but I, I did think, she, I knew she was going to say yes. And I think you know. How long did you leave it between engagement and marriage? A year. Nice. A year and a bit. Nice length. What did you do? Uh, yeah, 14 months. Maybe? Yeah, we did a year and a half. Yeah. His, his wedding was pretty good. Well, was Second nice. best wedding I've been to. What's the best? Legally, I'm not allowed to talk <laughs> about <laughs> it. <laughs> I think that's always nice with the wedding. Nothing says marriage more like an NDA. <laughs> it wasn't an NDA. Wait. It's just privacy. Right, fine. Privacy. So, so privacy. Wh wh did you give a speech? Did you say, were you a... a uh, Williams, yeah, I did a reading. It was Ecclesiastics. What was Ecclesiastes. it? Ecclesiastes. I had to write on the top of it how to pronounce Ecclesiastes. What? And I, I'm sure he did it to, for a laugh because he knows I'm very dyslexic. <laughs> Let me tell you, there was a reading we nearly gave you that would have been for a laugh, and I just read it and went, no. We can't, so I we had can't to read this Bible passage in yes. this church. Well, it's only because Adam, who did the other reading, our, my other friend, did not. He said, I'll do a reading, but I'm not doing a Bible reading. Mm. So he had a poem. So you did. We yeah. So I read a poem in the church, but we also. I'd How nervous were you? Because you don't like the I crowds. I was really nervous. Shaking I was shit. so nervous. I was. But it, you did a very good job. He sped. I, all I remember, actually, Adam did it too. <laughs> so it's not just on you. You know, sense of occasion. Yeah, I mean, I'm all about sense of occasion. Yeah, totally same. And they both sort of zipped up from the pew to, to the to the altar. Take or not your the altar, time. The, Be relaxed. Yes. Enjoy bit it. Of, bit of wasn't about me that day. No, but, but you did this sort of like comedy walk and wink to us, and then back. It was just. <laughs> did it. it was. That's such a panic. Comedy walk and a wink. It was. It was. <laughs> the reception was beautiful, though. The reception was very nice. We don't like long weddings. Oh, no. yeah. He didn't have a night, do you? No. This is famously I'm going doesn't to do. Let it into anyone thinking of getting married. Most people are at your wedding thinking. When can I no, go No, they're home? not. The night do's the best bit. That's when you get a Hang on, wait, you didn't have a party at night. Well, we had a lunch. 
They had, and that was it. It finished at it finished at seven six p.m. Six. six. It finished at six p.m. Traditionally, that's what used to happen. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's oh. what used to happen. Yeah. So wait, hang on. So you didn't do anything in the evening. Well, <laughs> well, we, a few friends, Jordan and Ben, our producer and Stuart, we all get, we booked a pub out, and then everyone just came to that. I mean, just we're on this. It was seventy six Dean Street, darling. I mean, don't <laughs> say it was a pub. Can we just we're try and be this. a bit relatable, please? <laughs> We booked Soho House out. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a member, right? I'm not. So yet, um, and you know, uh, isn't like first rule of Soho House you're not allowed to talk about Soho. Yeah, House. probably not. We booked a pub out, right? We booked a room out, and then 716 Street. <laughs> it's where Prince Harry met Meghan, by the way. Yes, I now discovered the room opposite. So um, we uh, basically we booked it out, and then he, everyone just came back to that. So we. Did an unofficial night there, and William and Mikey came. We put in a cameo appearance. Yeah. I had so said you... I wasn't sure whether we would turn up because I don't know how you're going to feel. Yeah. Um, we also had a suite, so you know we want to enjoy that. Thanks very much. <laughs> we just spent the day with the uh, with our friends. Um, I do know what you mean, though. At weddings, sometimes people just go. They're thinking, when can I yeah. leave? Every and... wedding is at least two hours too long. No, it's not. Yep. It, it, if not five. But also, he didn't have. This is rule number one. When you go and have a look at your wedding venues. Make sure, and please write this down, it's very important, make sure they've got beer on tap. You yeah. don't want bottles. Le- Why not? Because they're always lukewarm and it's never good. You want a proper pint. So I found out that... Pint where, is so big. Joe. Where he had his... That's so heavy. Where he had his wedding, they weren't, they weren't serving pints. It was just... I don't even think they were bottles of beer. So they got me a special pint glass. But it's very important. With Jordan's pint. I've ever been to a wedding where they do an illegal boot bar. What's that? So no, of course he went. Because what is so that? Lo- up north, an illegal boot bar. Up north, it's well known that wedding venues are quite expensive. Yeah. So it'll be like six. They're very affordable down south. It'll be like, yes. they're like five, six pound a pint, which is a lot up north. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah, always yeah, that yeah. one mate yeah, yeah. that you do a little recce beforehand at the venue. You find out what bottles of beer they're serving, and you go and get the bottles of beer from the shop, and you put them in the booty car. Mm. So then you set, you bring them out. So you don't sell them. He, my, my mate did at once. He made a fortune. He sold beers, beers a at a bar. wedding. It was like, yeah, give us a world. five. It was like, <laughs> give us a ten, I'll give you ten bottles. I was like, sound. So just took ten bottles and they did under the table. Yeah. But That's... be careful. If you get caught, the bride and groom get charged. They've clamped down on it up north. <clears throat> it was a pandemic. Um, <laughs> William, also, I, yes. I love your TikTok. Thank you. Um, well, I, I look at it the whole time. with oh, different bless things. You. And recently, I did something on my TikTok about being posh and where the word oh, posh yes, doesn't. Oh, yes, I got, yeah. We and got, every yeah. single person just tagged you in it saying, not sure you're right. My ver... And then I saw you did a way <laughs> better, my version of posh, yeah. which is... Four Town Star at Home. Is this true? Can you explain no, this? You explain it's not it. true. So a lot of, a lot of people, sort of the urban myth... Do you know this, too? And to be fair, until I researched I've heard it, of this. I agreed this too. Okay. Was the origins of posh goes back to sort of the, the cruise liners where the really expensive cabins mm-hmm. were when you went from London to sort of east. Uh, sorry, yeah, east. Mm. Um, you would pay for an expensive room. So you were on the port side of the boat on the way out, starboard mm-hmm. side on the way back. So you didn't get the light. So you weren't tanned. Again, different sort of different era where you didn't want to be pale skin was was seen as beautiful rather than sort of permatanned as mm-hmm. as it sort of has become um but on the way back you would be you'd have to be starboard home port out if you were then going the other way and that wasn't a thing That's posh, posh. and also there's there's no tickets there's no piece of historical evidence to back this up it sounds good but there isn't we think that posh it potentially was a romany word there, and there are all sorts of other ways but as far but as it's not it's not port house as far as <laughs> it's, it's total nonsense it's total nonsense as far as posh goes it don't get more posh than used to i don't i feel like i should be serving the tea here <laughs> or something <laughs> right would you use the word posh yourself no no exactly we'd say well first never rule, first rule of posh is upmarket smart yeah well educated well i don't think that's got anything to do with Posh. How would you? Because I'd say I'm working class. What would you say? <laughs> I, I always say this, but me and our Ryan had bunk beds till we were 21. That is. <laughs> That's very working class. He used to come on. No, you didn't. He used to come home on leave from yeah. the army, and he'd be on top bunk, fingering some girl, and I'd be on bottom bunk. <laughs> like you were bottom. <laughs> so, that's working class. <laughs> Yeah, no, he, he didn't actually finger anyone. I was just trying to add a bit of, <laughs> bit of fun to it. Bit of fun to it. <laughs> a bit of fun to it. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I would say, yeah, if someone said you posh. Well, I don't know. When someone says you posh, I just go, yeah, I don't know. I just. What you notice is working class people go, yeah, I'm working class and I'm proud. Whereas rich people are like, 
Uh, they won't say, yeah, I'm rich. I normally say to people, it's not that I'm posh, it's just that other people are very common. <laughs> This is sort of this is normal. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's everyone else that's deviant. Rich people, <laughs> rich people don't say they're rich; say they're wealthy. Oh no! Don't say well, wealthy. Say um, rich. Anyway, this potentially is strange. Why can't you say wealthy? We, so it's not. So you know, you and non-you words. No. Oh, okay. Um, so in the fifties, Nancy Mitford wrote a whole list of you meaning upper class and non-you meaning non-upper class words. And basically, wealthy was in the non-you column because it's euphemistic. Whereas aristocratic sort of talk is more direct. So someone hasn't passed away, they've died. Yeah. They're not wealthy, they're rich. Just spade a spade. Would you, but you, you, would you say, you, you wouldn't say used to a middle class, would you? You're a bit above it. Upper middle, you at least. I'm in a class of my own. <laughs> See go. how they're avoiding it. <laughs> okay. You don't know how to say okay, it. Okay, here's some posh terms. Go yes. On. If something is old... Jordan again, you play. something is old, mm -hmm. like if it's some, if it's clothes or like a clock or if it was old, what would what would you say that is? It's old. It's well used. It's ruined. Would you use vintage? ruined? <laughs> would you use vintage? Would you say vintage or antique? No, I would never say vintage unless I was buying a feeler top from a vintage store or oh, something. What? A feeler jacket. What's a feeler jacket? You know, feeler or a cap of popper tracksuit bottoms poppers yeah do you, know what cap do you remember poppers the tracksuit bottoms you popped them together they were do you know i didn't stores, wear no. those no yeah okay i'd never say vintage you never say vintage i would say i would say uh, oh i'd say antique I'd antique say something, i'd say something is antique okay. Yeah. okay what about um do you say champagne or prosecco or do you say bubble bubbly or fizz okay so i'm i'm from william you should never say bubbles or fizz but m my mum loves Prosecco, but we call it Lady Petrol. <laughs> Isn't that just the worst? <laughs> she called Lady... Just like, oh, me and Auntie Mags were on Lady Petrol last night. Oh, we were hammered. So, okay. Yeah. Um, what would you call it? You, would you never... Champagne would you say Prosecco. Would you say champers? No. I would would say you say... But you wouldn't say bubbles or fizz? No. Would you no. not? Prosecco, champagne. Oh, yeah, and, and they are two separate drinks. Yeah, two separate drinks. Yeah, champagne's yeah. French. But you wouldn't say, you wouldn't say yeah. champ champers. No, I would never say champers. Okay. What about, okay, um, when, when you wake up in the mm. morning and uh, you want that breakfast with sausages and yes. uh, hash brown, all that, what would you call that? A cooked breakfast. What would you call it? Full English. <laughs> 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 or a fry up. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Well, laughs> Okay, oh. would you call it an invitation or an invite? Invite, I'd say. You know this. He hates, he'd say invitation. Invite is the verb, invitation is the noun. When you go to the bathroom um, and there's that, there's that thing that you, you pee into, what, what does that you... Bog. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it? That's a lavatory. <laughs> or a loo. A toilet. He hates, he hates the word yeah, toilet. To when, you, when you go into a room and there's that thing that you sit on when you can watch the TV, what do you, what do you call that? Seti. <laughs> That's a sofa. It's a settee. It's not. What would you call it? Sofa. Couch. Settee, isn't it? It's not settee. Is it leather or fabric? He. One of the things he found hilarious is I once said, oh, I remember my mum and dad stay over. They stayed on bed settee. And he couldn't get over that we called it a bed settee. What it's is a sofa bed? bed? Is that what a bed settee is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't know what a bed city. On a bed city. In bed city. Um, okay, when you're eating, uh, you're eating a meal and you you got food, so you, you wipe it with so with something that you have next to your plate. What is that called? Uh, uh, napkin, serviette. Well, which one are you going to? Which go one? For? Serviette. Oh, common. No, <laughs> napkin. Oh, serviette. See, serviette and setting. Okay, last one. Do you have um? What is that room that you have where you can watch TV or you can just go and sit in it? It's uh, it's it's actually not. It's where you go and sit in your house. You go and sit in it. It's quite nice. Living room. You call it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lounge. Oh. <laughs> you're not an airport. Uh, it's a sitting room or drawing room. Or if you're terribly smart, you have different types. You have the red drawing room, the white drawing room, the morning room. It's a, a lounge. No. <laughs> It's so good. And living I room, I, can't, I don't like the word living room. You live in every room. Yeah, you I don't, don't know have why a dining room. room, do you? You don't have a dining room. No, well, I mean, you do at some point, but not, <laughs> you don't call it. What do you call an ensuite? The bathroom. The bathroom. Well, see, where, when I'm growing up, if my, I remember my mates, mum and dad had their own ensuite, and I thought they were 
well rich. Why? <laughs> because they... Listen, listen to this. Okay. It was, it's my mate Rick. They had an ensuite, a conservatory, and they drunk proper Ribena. Oh my and God, I was did like, they have titles? <laughs> and I were like, these guys are doing well. What do you mean proper Ribena? So they didn't have like the, the, the cheap Asda version. They had the proper Ribena. actual Ribena. You know, like we had like Sainsbury's own Sainsbury's? Black, Sainsbury's own black currant or whatever it were. They had yeah. proper Ribena. I went to my mate Rick's house. And he had an Xbox in conservatory and his mum and dad had an ensuite and I was like, you guys are, this is, this is how the other half live. He had an Xbox in Dutch conservatory. Did you, <laughs> did you have an ensuite? Did you have a nanny? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, you had a nanny, didn't you? Mm, no. Uh, no is the short answer. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't even have a cleaner growing up. How did you live? <laughs> it's just mad. Well, last time you were on, you gave this amazing thing, which is uh, the reason why people hold their pinky out. Oh, and syphilis. Syphilis. Yes. Um, have you heard anything recently which has shocked you, surprised you, that you have gone, oh, I never knew, something new that you can give us as well? Oh, God, now you are. Like, me. I know, this has put you on the spot massively. Right. I, I heard this one recently, which is... Yeah, tell me. Okay, well, I've got two for you. Which Go is, on. Have I told you uh, the reason why the bull watch is the bull watch? The what? Okay, so have you... Okay. What is a bull watch? All right, so have you ever a heard... Bull. The, have you ever heard the term, are you on the bull? Bull or ball? Oh, on the ball, as in you're, you're quick thinking. Yeah, quick thinking. On, on the, the ball. ball or on bull? The, what are you... A bull? A bull as in a cow bull or a ball. <laughs> what are you saying? Bull. As in the bull that you kick. Oh, ball. Why are you saying Be- bull? With an egg. What are you saying? You're, it's a ball. Yeah, bull. You're saying ball. I'm saying bull. Right. Can someone get me an inter- an, inter- an entrepreneur, what they call? <laughs> not, not, not an entrepreneur, ball. an interpreter. What are you saying? Ball, ball, ball. Right, ball. it's a ball. Are you on the ball? Right. Ball, ball. Yeah, I'm going more northern here. Go on. Okay. <laughs> on the ball. So supposedly that was, uh, there was a guy, I can't remember his name. He was a, a traffic controller. He worked on trains and his watch gave the wrong time. So he let the train go through a, a signal, terrible crash. Everyone died. He was so distraught because of the whole situation yeah. that he created, for the rest of his life, he created a watch that would never lose time called the Bull Watch. Hence the saying, are you on the ball? Oh, he's oh. on the ball. Do you remember the Alton Deck sound? <laughs> he's on the ball. Oh, gosh. I thought that was too weird. It's like a broken record yeah, over here. What about uh, the term, are you up to scratch? Oh, no. Okay, we're going to love these. Love okay, here yeah, we yeah, go. Yeah. Are you up to scratch? These um, are great. I love so like this. the reason why we say are you up to scratch is that boxing back in the day used to fight opposite each other and draw a line on the ground with your foot, and that line was called scratch. And you'd put your feet on scratch, and you'd box each other. If one person fell to the ground, if they didn't get back up and put their foot on scratch, they lost the game. Hence the saying, are you up to scratch? Oh, wow. Oh. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm in the middle of researching. We do a feature called William's Etiquette Etymology of the Week, which we do every other week. And... Um, you are you or one of the listeners asked why is awake called awake? Oh, great! And basically, it's because it goes back a, a, a while, obviously, and it was basically a period of time where you were just waiting to see if they woke up, basically. Mm. Because again, science was not advanced that you weren't actually oh, sure. So you just wait. Yeah. Uh, and that's why you used to have bells on your graveyard because if you woke up, you'd ring the bell. Yeah. Why Saved do we, by the bell. Why do we? No, s- what is that? Saved by the bell. Oh, ah, yeah. awesome. come on, give us more. What other ones? Why? Are yeah, why do, do we say, saluting? I'll, do you know saluting? No, go on. I know the two different ways around. Yeah. Okay, well, supposedly when we used to saluting back in the day, what? So we salute. That's a salute. Um, we used to joust on horses, and yep. we used to wear a metal visor on your head. I don't mm. know, and what you would do before you fought your opponent, you would lift your visor up to look at your opponent eye to eye. Uh, Hence, why we now salute. Yes, and in the navy, they the they will salute uh, with the palm down, whereas army and RAF are like that yeah. because the navy they don't want to show dirty gloves because they're on ships. So the, a naval salute is down, whereas a um, army and RAF is the other way around. So an army's down. that and naval's that. Isn't it? I I heard that apparently the reason why we have buttons on our jackets so we didn't rub our noses was that why or no? Don't rub our noses. Well, I thought that's so, so we stop kids from rubbing oh. their noses. Is that wrong? I don't know if that's I don't true. know if that's why they're there. They're there because you were meant to. So surgeons' cuffs, they're called, and so surgeons who would operate back in the day would operate in a jacket, would unbutton them and oh. roll the sleeves back to wash up. Where does and their the surgeons' cuffs? Where does the term "shit off a shovel" come from? <laughs> Well, that's more your department. <laughs> I'd love to know that. Okay, here's one more. Yeah. The reason why buttons are different to male to female is because men used to dress themselves and women were dressed. Yes. Ah, uh, keep going. These are great. Uh, the reason why we have grooves on the side of our coins 
is because coins were used to do done by the weight of it. And so we used to chip away to create other coins. And it's a respect of the old coins that used to have grooves in it. You know, other countries um, are a bit snobby about us going, oh, we drive on the left, aren't we weird? And yeah. etc. Everyone used to ride on the left and not drive, going back to horses because your sword was kept on your on a scabbard on the left hip and so if someone was coming towards you and you were going to attack them you would draw your sword jousting your jousting thing prompted this and you would attack them and napoleon basically in france hated the british so much he thought well stuff there i'm going to do it on the we're going to sort of switch and every other country didn't like us how times have changed and so they uh, also switched but actually it was us who were normal and it's everyone else who's changed oh my god okay it's great, isn't i love it? this uh, the reason why we say touch wood you know, sorry. When, <laughs> oh, uh, now, Jamie, come on. <laughs> the reason why we say touch wood is so in pagan times, we believe that spirits lived in the wood. And so when you were, yeah, so banging in the wood. So when you were um, telling your secrets or your desires to come true, mm. you thought if the spirits heard, they would stop them from coming true. So you'd bang on the wood, touch wood, so they would make noise so the spirits wouldn't hear what you were saying. Hence the saying touch wood. Oh. That's why we don't put shoes on the table as well. Why yeah. is that? Because you say it's a... I feel like I'm. Well, new, shoe, <laughs> no, new shoes. No, on the table. You don't put yeah. new shoes on the table. No, you don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because but why when they used to hang people, you was on. They do it on. The shoes would be on wood on a. Is that like what it was from? Table, I didn't yeah. know that. So I like, did not was, know that. There's Bad a plot look. twist, Jordan. Did that is unbelievable. So, that's why you don't put shoes on the table because obviously you used to stand on the table to get hung or you'd be like on a wooden plank. So it was seen that if you put new shoes on it, I think you get hanged, not hung. Actually, well, are, are you I hanged? Are you? I'm sorry. Are you? I, I heard, when they were well hanged. <laughs> th this is a good one. So, um, uh, where tap dancing originated from was in slavery times when they, uh, they, used, they used to do tap dancing in the ground. It was called sand dancing, and they'd be drawing how to escape. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, how to escape. So, they'd be drawing it in the sand with feet. That's so interesting. Yeah, so interesting. So many things. Love it. Anything else? Did Colin? you learn that on street? Uh, that's, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Isn't, yeah, I can't top that. That was great. That's very good. Yes. Um, okay, last one before, here we go, ready for this, guys, is that uh, I want to hear the right etiquette for things. So drinking tea and coffee. So when you stir your tea and coffee, I know this, you're meant to stir, use the spoon in a back and forth motion. You yeah, don't stir, right, you don't do right. it Why do you do it? Why do you do it back and forth? Two reasons. If the cup is very full, maybe Jordan's made you a mug of tea and it's very full, as he did back in the day in 2011 when we met, and it was a very full mug. If you stir round and round, it actually will splosh out the side and either fall in the saucer mm. or go on the table. Back and forth, try this at home, it does not uh, splash. Also, if you have added a cube of sugar, um, which some people do, round and round doesn't dissolve that sugar, whereas back and forth does dissolve it. But Physics. my... Me and my mate did an experiment in year nine, and I still swear by it now. <laughs> did you experiment with a mate in year nine? No, I, I am telling you now, if you have sugar in your tea and you stir your tea anti-clockwise, the sugar goes up and it tastes better. That but is the biggest pile of shit I've ever heard <laughs> in my entire life. Uh, it, it is, honestly. Really, that so is the biggest pile of shit ever. That's what I... So if we, we made loads of brews, mm -hmm. and we made one and stirred it anti-clockwise, and the sugar goes I'm up... I'm not sure that's correct. I, I, I'm telling you, I didn't Okay, two that. more ones. How do you get a waiter's attention? Ah, oh, never click. Don't shout. Okay. I mean, you could say excuse me as they go past. It's eye really contact, isn't it's it? It's eye contact and body language, making yourself bigger at the table. Just... Just make yourself bigger. Yeah. You're like going to put, rugby yeah. tackle them. <laughs> yeah. You just make yourself bigger. Yeah, but so, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> not in a smarty way, but you just sort of make yourself sort of larger, move yourself back from the table. So eye contact. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. last one I saw in your TikTok, William, how mm. to eat a burger. Oh my God, this caused so much <sighs> controversy. Just get it down, yeah. No, well, no, because it depends on the style of burger. Obviously, if it's a McDonald's type burger where it's quite squat, you can sort of just pick it up with your hand and eat you can cut it in half if it's like a droopy burger but no because we'd never really use a knife on bread but anyway that's that's a whole other story but you would uh do you, if it's a big sort of artisan burger so that video i filmed was at balthazar on yeah. Covent garden and their burgers are huge and you can't pick that unless and that, as i said in the video unless you are in the circus you can't fit anything that big in your mouth and believe me i've tried <laughs> so you would deconstruct the burger and then use a knife and fork and uh eat it like so do you know why we have bread at the beginning of meals to line the well, to line the stomach. Okay, to line the stomach, but also bread um, has uh, sugar in it and and whatever it has in it. But it gives you spikes of endorphins in your brain, so therefore you're more entitled to spend more money. 
Is it? Yeah. I've talked about it. I bloody love bread. I love bread. I could just it, live off bread. Murder, yeah. I could live off bread. I've said this so many times. I would have been a great pauper back in the day. You know where they just have bread and dripping? Yeah. Do, sorry? Bread and dripping. It's like butter. Or just, just bread and a bit of broth. <laughs> it's fat from the beef. Basically. Yeah, you know, like broth. Just, yeah, if we, I'd come home and my like wife, a stew, yeah, like I can have that. Yeah. Sorry, love, we're really poor. We're only having we're only having bread and broth. I'd be like, that'll do for me. I would have just bread and butter. Back in oh, 2019, yeah. I think on our podcast, uh, we went to Monaco um, for a episode, for a couple of episodes. I was reviewing a hotel, and my now husband couldn't join me, so I said to Jordan, "Oh, do you want to come as my plus one?" And you weren't working, so well, you've had like one one show a week or something. So <laughs> you had a lot of time on your hands, and we went. We were in the Hotel de Paris in. In Monaco, very nice hotel, lovely restaurant upstairs, Michelin star. All he wanted was the bread and butter. And they just didn't yeah, have delicious. Bread. Yeah, delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can I just have more bread, please? And they, were, they really asked me. And then we went down for breakfast and it was tiny. It was like this tiny little... <laughs> and then you were really cross that there wasn't a breakfast <laughs> buffet. I know, well pissed off. No, Imagine because it's smart hotel. hotels, it's a la carte. <laughs> it was, there was no breakfast buffet. And when we got there, and this was... I'd only just moved to London, so not like they do this. So when we got there... We got out of the car. I was in reception and the car drove off. And I'm going, William, cars drove off. He's nicked the fucking bags, the bags. I'm going to, well, so they take them around to a separate entrance and put I them in your room. I didn't know they took them around to back. <laughs> well, round to back. I, I thought you were robbing us. I was like, help, quick. Somebody call police. This lovely marble lobby. And he's this rough northerner screaming, going, the bags, the bags. I thought you were robbing bags. So embarrassing. <laughs> when, I think you told me as well about salt. Did oh, you yes. tell me this? Where salary. Salary. Yeah. And that's why you have one hole. Are you worth your salt. Yeah, yes. can you can you say this again? Yeah, so salt etiquette, if you look at salt and pepper pots, uh, salt will, if it's done correctly, will have one hole, pepper will have several. And pepper, that's because you can sprinkle wherever. Salt, you are meant to put in a, on the sort of the upper rim of the plate, you're meant to put in a little neat pile and then use the tip of your knife to apply it. And that was because salt, back in the sort of Roman times, certain people were paid in salt, in bags of salt, because it was very expensive. If you were worth your salt, you were worth the salary you were paid mm. the latin word for uh, salt is sal and thus you didn't chuck it around about the place because it was an expensive commodity and again that's sort of an etiquette that although salt very cheap now is sort of a state okay before we go the book is out now yes it came out yesterday it came out yesterday uh joel domit is on the front a lovely hilarious some book. lovely people are on the back as well it says help i sexted my boss and one thing in it Last piece of advice before you go. How do you get rid of a one-night stand? <laughs> That's... Don't we talk Over about that in the book? Don't yeah, we, we do. We I do. Think, yes. Right, it's, yeah, it's, in the it's book. one of them. You've got... To, you, you, there's two ways of doing it. Uh, you can be... Well, let's do some role play. So, okay, do you want to be my so, one-night stand? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, God. so there's two God ways. Bilious. There's um, two ways you can do it. You can be nice and, and a gentleman. Mm. Morning. <laughs> Shake them awake. Okay. Is it? Hey, morning. Oh, hello. What's your name? Uh, Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. What's yours? Um, William. William. Thanks for last night. Oh no, it was lovely. Thank you. It was really good. I've got I love an that arse. thing you did with the teeth. Yeah, I've got an arse like the Mersey Tunnel after that. <laughs> um, look, I, I'm just. Can I get your coffee? And uh, am I all right to call you a cab? I've just got. I've got. I've then got call me get, William. And I've got to get. I've got to get to work. Okay. Okay. What do you do for work? Um, I'm uh, a broadcaster. You're a broadcaster? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But look, thanks for last night. Look, the shower's there. If there's anything I can do Are you going? I'll, I'm going to go and uh, make you a coffee. Okay. And I'll, I'll call you a cab. If you need a shower or anything, anything is there. Just let me know if you need anything. That's very kind. Okay. That's the nice... That's a great way. I like that's that. That's nice great. Very gentle. Yeah. Okay. The other way? Is you, you sneak out. Like you tiptoe, especially if it's not your house. You gather everything, but I will warn you here. And I'm, this is only because I've been told from friends and stuff. Hey, hey friends. Yeah. It's it's you. It's always your jeans that will call you out. So check you've no change in your pocket. As soon as you pick them up, you don't want the coins doing a big bloody dance, singing that song and dance on the floor. And the belt. It's that belt. Once that starts rattling round like the town crier's bell, so you've got to be careful with a belt. So you just. Pop up. Hold the belt and you can make a little exit. Yeah. Right. Not that no. No. 
and there's lots of helpful advice like that. There's loads of stuff so in great. there like that. Listen, we can leave the link in the description to the book as well. I'm on the back as yes. well, guys. What? I'm on the back? Yeah, you gave yes. us a quote. I know. I said, help. I love this book. See? Indeed. Indeed. Didn't thank even you read so it, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've read it. And no, yes, yes. Guys, that's so sweet. Listen, um, love you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Go and listen to your podcast. Where it's honestly, Bless doesn't matter you. what kind of mood you're in, it always makes you just feel better. You guys are such good friends and you're so authentic and so real with each other it's just such a great listen oh, it, it's so, it is it really thank is you. we appreciate that thank, thank you. you for having us back thanks for having us on guys. and good the luck. book's out now so you can order go it go and get the book right now help I sexed my boss by William <laughs> 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 see you later goodbye <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, guys. guys thank oh. you so much